would like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Deputies were sent to a trailer park in Ocala, Florida after 48-year-old Lisa Jeffrey was reported missing. Detectives spoke to Patience Burton during a well-being check and she let them into the Jeffrey's trailer home. That's where Lisa Jeffrey's body was discovered wrapped in bags in a storage compartment underneath the bed in the spare room. Lisa and Bo Pete were separated but living together at the Holiday Travel RV Resort. After the discovery of Lisa's body, Bo Pete Jeffrey was brought in for interrogation by Detective John Lytle of the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Okay. You hungry or anything? I can eat, sir, and I've been throwing up for a while. Okay. Do you feel like you're going to be sick now, or do you need... All right, let me get you something. Here you go, just in case something goes, goes awry, then he'll have that for you, all right? You sure you don't want to water any food or anything? You got a cocoa. I'm well, sure we come up with something like that. What is it? Cocoa. I'll find you one. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Zero five. Another plate so I can lay down. Um, here in just a minute. Let me uh, talk to these guys out here real quick, and I'll. Uh, All right, sir. All right, there you go. Uh, Happens, Your Honor, at this point. With the court's permission, may I advance it? Yes. Sir, Mr. Jeffrey, how are you, sir? How are you doing? Oh, there's two in there? Okay, we can pretend. Yeah. Have a seat, sir. We're just going to talk to you, okay? Okay. How you doing? This is Lucy. McQuaid. Hey, how you doing? All right, sir. All right. Detective Lyle, we're with Marion County. Marion County. Well, do you want to have a seat up here? I can't make it back up there. Need a hand, or? Uh, I my whole body's just going away. Yeah? Got it? You got it. Looks like you got it. There you go. Uh, all right, sir. How are you? So, how are you doing today, sir? I see you're uh, having some problems here. Um, let me just get your information right. Make sure I'm speaking to the right person. Okay. What is your first name? O. That's B O, right? Yeah, I'm Pete. Pete. Okay. Jeffrey. J E F F R E Y. Yes, sir. Okay, and what is your cell phone number, though? Nine zero four seven six nine zero six nine five. Zero six nine five. And what is your address? 
I live at the Travel I Holiday Campground, Highway 40. Okay. What lot number is that? 808. Okay. And um, what, what's your date of birth? October 30th, 1963. Okay. And uh, let's see here. So um, let's talk a little bit about your, how long have you lived in, in, in Ocala on the Office 40? I've been there about eight months this time. Okay. And what do you do for a living? I do a little driveways. <laughs> And is that what bring you all over, or is that just a local thing? Just down here. What's that? Just down here. Okay. And down here means like what, Florida or? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so do you own your own business, or do you work for somebody else? I just do a little small jobs for myself, me and my sons. Okay. Do you have any employees under you, or is this just like a family thing? No, I don't have any employees. Okay. Um, so, uh, do you go by Bo or do you go by Pete? Pete. Pete. Okay, Pete. Um, so do you know why you're here? No. Okay. I'd like to, uh, talk to you today and get to know you a little bit more. Um, the circumstances are, um, rather serious, so I want to make sure that we talk to you and we communicate clearly what we're here for and, um, what the situation is that's going on. Um, and as part of that, you came down here to the Putnam County Sheriff's Office today, right? And I, my understanding is you came down here voluntarily? To no, they brought room? me. Okay. Did you come here on your own free will, or did, did they bring you down here against your will? They brought me. Okay. Did, uh, did, when the deputy brought you down here, did, did you agree to come down here? Okay. Um, so I want to let you know that you're, I'm going to read you your rights, okay? Because I want to talk about, talk about some sensitive things with you. Um, so I'm just going to read them off this card here, okay? You have the right to remain silent, okay? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Okay? Right. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Yes. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish, okay? okay. You can decide at any time to execute these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements, okay? Do you understand each of these rights as I've explained them to you? Yeah. Oh, you're nodding your head yes. Okay. Yes, and having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your your sons. Um, I want to get to, little, get to know a little bit more about you and your family. So your sons, are they adults? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're grown men. Grown men. Okay. So what, uh, I, know, I know you have, I think uh, someone has spoken with uh, uh, Bo Jr. Um, at this, and how old is Bo Jr.? Uh, 30, 30, 32. Okay, and he's got, he's got kids? Uh -huh. He has kids? Yeah. Okay, so you're grandpa. Yeah, uh, many times over. <laughs> how many kids do you have total? I have four boys and one girl. Okay. And all your kids are probably adults then, right? Okay. And um, so aside from Bo Jr., let's talk about, so you have three other sons besides him. What, what are their names? Uh, Cody. Okay. Harry. And little Eddie. Eddie? Okay. And, your, and what's your daughter's name? Christian. <laughs> Christian? Christian. Christian. Okay. All righty. And uh, so... In, uh, you've lived in Ocala for about eight months. Now, where did you live before that? I was up there with uh, Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe? And where does Uncle Joe stay at? He's down here now to get me, but uh, he got a doctor's appointment. Okay. And your uncle, is it your actual Uncle Joe, or do you just call him that? He is. Mama's brother. Mom's brother. Okay. And where, where, so Uncle Joe lives right here in, in Putnam County? No, he lives up in Atlanta, but my Mary Jane was uh, here where you all come drop me at. Oh, okay. Uncle Joe and Mary Jane, are they married? Uh huh. Are they not no more? They've been divorced for 30 years. Okay. Um, and what have you been up to the last couple of days? 
just coming down here. Just so you don't go and hope I don't die. Okay, what's going on with you health wise? I'm an alcoholic. Okay. Diabetes. I think I'm coming to the end of my road, sir. Okay. So you you are uh, an alcoholic and you have diabetes. How long have you had diabetes? Since so five. Okay. And uh, any other health concerns? We should. Um, they said my blood pressure was up uh, down. Okay. Is, is high blood pressure something that you normally have? No, they only told me every time I go to the doctor, I've got diabetes. Okay. okay. And I go every three months. Okay. I have to because I'm diabetic and I have to get checked out. Do you get like, uh, does your driveway business, does that give you enough income to get by or do you have another source of income or anything like that? I swing by. Okay. Um, let's talk about your. Um, you gonna throw up? <laughs> Did you drink last night? You want some uh, nap? <laughs> let's get him something. Give us just a second, I'm gonna get you something to wipe up, okay? You don't have a place so I can lie down. We don't have uh, like sleeping quarters here, I don't think. Um, obviously we want to talk to you about this case, it's pretty important. Here, my lieutenant's got you some paper towels. Is that your is that your drink? All right. Yeah, don't drink anything else because if you're throwing up from that, then uh, we don't want you to uh, keep throwing up. You know what I mean? Some water too, if you want that instead. All right. What do you got there? Drinks that coffee? No, they gave me a coke. A coke? Oh, okay. <laughs> We want to talk to you about um, your living arrangements and stuff up there in Ocala. So what's uh, what's the story with um, this woman by the name of Patience? Yeah. Who is that? Um, I get, well, she's my long cousin, long distance cousin. Okay. She lives in a uh, campground underneath the interstate on call or travel. Okay. Let's talk about her a little bit. So, you got, um, my understanding is that you guys are in some kind of a relationship? Oh, yeah, I've known her all my life. My, okay. My mom and her toys. They know me all my life. Has she been staying with you? Yeah, now. She was staying with me in the past? When was the last time she was been staying with you? Kind of take me through that timeline as far as like how long have you been? Just the day before yesterday. Okay. Let's talk about the day before yesterday then. So we're not talking about, today is um, Tuesday. Yeah. Or are we talking about Sunday? Probably. Um, okay. Yesterday was Monday, so the day before yesterday would have been Sunday. Let's talk about Sunday. Okay. What happened Sunday? Nothing, just... She had to go down to Florida to be with somebody. Her mom was sick. They come got her. And she went home. Okay. And did you take her home or did somebody else take her home? Uh, my cousin come got her. Okay. 
Where, okay, help me understand. Was she staying with you on Sunday originally, and then she was dropped off? Yeah. Okay, and who's your cousin? Uh, Jojo Jeffrey. Jojo Jeffrey, okay. And Jojo Jeffrey dropped her off at um, her mom's house? No, my son come back there. We took the ride across the yard, the red guy or anything else. Okay. Okay. So your son dropped her off there at her mom's? Or? No. Well, she could only go, she could walk right underneath the bridge and get home. Okay. Well, I just live right beside 75. And they've been living there for about 40 years. Okay. Was patients with you before then? No. Um, my wife. Uh, wife and, okay. And she had to come to the me. I hadn't been able to be in the room with her. I just don't take somebody to pull the plug. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um, patients coming over because your wife left you. Is that accurate? No, she was saying with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When did your wife leave? November 5th. Okay. Tell me about that. What happened with that? She just got time to move on. Okay. Now, just so we know we're talking about the same person, what's your wife's name? Lisa Jeffrey. Okay. Tell me about Lisa. Tell me everything you can about her. Tell me if I pretend like I don't know anything about her. What kind of person is she? She gives a little sweet heart, and okay. she's sick with colon disease. And uh, we just know each other all of our life. Have you guys had problems um, with your marriage, or what, what's going on? Why did she leave? Lisa? No, she just, she always would just uh, disappear at night. Uh, I don't know where she went. She would appear during the night? Mm hmm She would appear at night? Disappear from my home. Okay. Well, I'd be asleep or something back down. Okay. Um, so what uh, What kind of things was she into? I mean, she's disappearing at night. What was she doing? A crack. Okay. Crack cocaine? Yes, ma'am. What kind of, uh, aside from the crack cocaine, was there anything else that she was doing? Um, that smoking weed. Okay. Okay, so um, when you, the last um, month or so, have you been living with anybody else at your trailer? You've been living alone? No, she comes over and tends to me. You talking about patients? Patients, yeah. Okay. So she has like key to your house? Mm -hmm. She has a key to your house? No. She does not have a key to your house? Okay. Does she have any belongings there? No, I don't think. Uh, she doesn't live when you live with me. <laughs> we just uh, see one another. She, okay. Are, are you guys in a dating relationship? No, she's my cousin. Okay. You guys have not been sexual in the past? Never had, never had sexual intercourse or fooled around with her or anything like that? No, her. Okay. So, um, so patients will be coming over to, to tend, to tend uh, for you and make, make, make sure that you're okay and you have everything that you need. Yeah. Um, so, let's talk a little bit more about, um, where, where have you been the last, uh, like, week or so? Traveling. Okay. I left home, I think, Monday. 
you left home the Versus this last Monday? Yeah. Okay, just so I'll make sure I have my calendar out so I'm accurate here. I don't know the date. <laughs> Monday would have been the November 26th, is that accurate? Yeah. I think. Okay, today's Tuesday, the December 4th, right. and then yesterday would have been um, the 3rd. One week before that would have been December 26th, so approximately Monday. Okay, where, where'd you go from there? Up here. Up here? Okay. And when you came here, where did you go specifically? Do you have a job or? No, we're not getting married. Okay. Just got there this morning, though. Okay, so on Monday, when, approximately Monday, when you came up here to go to Mary's, um, and what's Mary's last name? Mary? I don't know, it used to be Jack. She's been married like three different times. Okay. And that's where you were, you were found today, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so I'll have Monday after you came up here to go be with Mary, what happened next? I was just sitting around. I mean, I didn't come here to yesterday. I mean, this morning. Okay. So what happened over the last week then, from Monday? I'm just the owner. Patients would come over and check on me. Make sure I was all right. She would come up here to check on you? Mm -hmm. She would come up here to check on you? No, over from my trailer. Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Were you were you up here all week or were you back in Ocala? No, I come here yesterday and I was staying at this motel out right here. Bought you down, whatever. Okay. And I just got like, oh, this is not doing right. And I drove out there. Okay. Let's talk about one week ago. How, where have you been? I'm talking about not yesterday, but last Monday, one week ago. Where were you at? One at home. Okay. So talk, take me through uh, last week. Try to remember every detail you can. Just live every day. <laughs> Laying in bed every day, you said? No. Uh, Laying in bed every day? No, I just got sick last night. So one week ago, you were at the house. Okay. Take me through the week. What, so have you been bedridden or have you been moving around and traveling throughout? Bedridden. Okay. Now, um, let's start with Monday of last week. Uh, so you're, so you're sick. Uh, what, describe your symptoms to me. Are you like the kind of, kind of, you can't get out of bed or? I'm weak. Okay. So you were in Ocala for the last week. Is that accurate? Okay. And you actually came up here yesterday is that yeah. accurate okay yeah. I, I misunderstood you so okay so that makes okay. sense so when's the last time um, you haven't been in contact um, with your is it your wife or your ex-wife Lisa Lisa yeah okay and when was the last time you've been in contact with her over a phone or in person yeah Friday hmm Friday okay this uh this last Friday? Yeah, the other day of Friday. Okay, tell me about that. So I don't live no life. I go to work, come home, take care of myself, and go back out. Okay. When you were in contact with her Friday, what happened? Patience. No, I'm talking about Lisa. Oh, I ain't talked to her in a long time, about a month. Okay, that's the November 5th you're talking about? Okay. And the last time you spoke with patients was what day? Day before yesterday. Okay. We might have already covered this, but when did you leave Ocala and come here? That was that would have been Monday yesterday. No. Yeah, Monday, not this Monday. Last Monday. Okay, you just told me that you were in Ocala all week last yeah. week, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know which Monday it was. Okay. Right. Yesterday, you came up here to yeah. where you're at currently at. Yeah. And one week ago, we talked about how you were in Ocala at your house, correct? Okay. Um, where, did, where did you go when you left Monday? 
first place you stopped last Monday? Gosh, I don't remember. I was so sick. Did you go to a, you said earlier that you went to a budget motel? I was yesterday, I don't remember. Well, did you, tell you, you said a little while ago you went like for four or five days or something like that, stayed a week of the budget or no? Just no, 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 no. I just was there last night. Here in Palatka? Yeah. And then you left the motel last night to come to Mount Mary's? Mount Mary's, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't have a good memory at all yesterday and the day before. Okay. Well, let's talk about... Um, more specifically, last week, you, you had said earlier that you were at the house in you Nocala, know, kind of hanging out. Um, when's the last time you've been working? God, uh, it's been a while. Okay. I haven't been able to do that in about three weeks. Okay, so you haven't been working in about three weeks. So you've been at the house, and patience has been checking on you. And this whole time, um, was was... Lisa staying at the trailer with you, or where was she staying? Uh, her mother lives in Maine. Her mother lives in Maine. Okay. Um, does Lisa have any property at the house? I don't know. If she might go live stuff. So. Okay. So, patients would come and visit you and yeah. take care of you. And Lisa's kind of been out of the picture since November 5th. Right. And um, your daily routine for the last week, uh, would it be accurate to say that you've been kind of around the house and yeah, sick and things of that nature? Yeah. Okay. Um, when was the last time that you've actually been to your trailer? Uh, I was gone from there altogether like a week, maybe, or one month. I'm sorry, repeat that. I, I left there Monday, not just Monday, but the one before. Okay. I'm a little bit confused. I am too, because I don't remember too good. Okay, so you have been out of the house for over a week now? Away from the house? Yeah. Okay. Because you're kind of... Tripping over yourself here. I'm trying to help, help understand this. I understand, this. sir. So you you have been away from the house for one week. Okay. And has anyone had access to your house in the last week? No. Cameras closed up. Can I ask why? Uh -huh. Can I ask why you haven't been back to your house? Because I've been coming up here and fiddling around and uh, just ain't been able to make it back there. Okay. And when you describe kind of being up here and fiddling around, what does that mean? There's besides me and my other family goes out and interlocking. Okay. So traveling around and whatnot? A little bit. Okay. And who have you been traveling with? Have you been alone or with somebody else? By myself. Okay. What kind of car uh, have you been driving this week? I have a 16 Dodge Ram pickup. What's in your Dodge Ram pickup right now? The one that you've been driving? Just a little mild of things. Okay. Can you tell me what's inside the truck? Is there a, do you have a, a cell phone? No, I lost it. That's the reason I had to come here so they know who I am. Okay. What else do you have in your truck right now? Do you have like work stuff or do you have my like, dad or something? Just in general, what's in there? What's in your truck right now? If you could, on the inside of the cab, I keep it clean. Okay. They brought my bag in at Mary's when I was there. Okay. So there's a bag in there. What does your bag contain? My clothes. Anything else? Tools of the trade or anything like that? There's some shovels and stuff on the back. Okay. Uh, we might have already talked about this. I'm just going to make, make sure I have this clarified. Uh, when was the last time you spoken with patients and been seen her in person? I don't 
and they were gone. There had to be one day last week. Okay. Did you go into any stores with her or anything like that? I don't know. I mean, we have been, but not like yesterday or today, you know what I mean? Okay. So over the last week, you have been with patients at time to, from time to time? Yeah. Okay. Was she? How was she getting back and forth to see you? She'd walk. She'd walk from her mom's house over to you? Uh, I live in the campground on this side, and she lives over there in that one. Right. So she's been kind of coming to your house and seeing you and, and stuff like that, things of that nature. Um, have you been made any recent pawns or anything like that? Been into a pawn shop or anything? Yeah. Okay, tell me about that. I had three rings and I had to pawn them just to get by and to get out of here. Okay. And you looked at your hand there for a second. Were those rings that you normally wear wore on you? No, they'd already been pawned. Okay, were those rings that you sold, were those rings that belonged to you? Yeah. Okay. And who was with you uh, when that happened? I was by myself. You weren't with anybody else? Where did you, uh, where, where was that pond made at? Do you remember? One was uh, Jerry's Pawn Shop in Ocala. <coughs> and the other one was that little pond gun and I place to come right out of uh, Stark. Okay. And when you went to the one in Stark, you were by yourself? Tell me about, uh, tell me more about Lisa. I, I, my understanding is we talked to a lot of people and they said that she's got a lot of problems and that you guys have had a lot of problems. Um, tell me about the history of your marriage and what's been going on. We got married in 12. Okay. And I've been surviving, sir, but here in my chin to chin chin, trying to get from where they know me. Because I, I know I'm gonna die today. Okay. So when you guys when you guys got married, I mean, uh, where did you guys get married at? Was this okay. I'm going to start. Oh, okay. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. You don't have any kids with Lisa, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you got married in 2012 in Stark. And tell me about the history of the relationship. Did it? Uh, why did you guys get divorced? She was sorry. She was bad on dope, man. Okay. I wouldn't give her nothing no more. She would steal my money and... Okay, tell me more about that. I just did it and she would disappear or steal one of my trucks and roll the ground. Okay. I had heard that she, um, or maybe you had told another law enforcement officer that she had taken some money out of your truck. Tell me about that. I have three trucks and I have a lot of pouches. I don't know if I keep it under the steering wheel. Okay. And for me to order the, the pay on my bills, I had to put a little money in this truck and a little money in that truck. Okay. And she had called her daughter, her daughter called Paris and said, what you doing, Mom? And she said, I'm cleaning out the truck. And then I woke up and the pouch was over there. And she was gone. How much money was it? Seven hundred dollars. She took seven hundred dollars. Was that the nice, that was the day? That, did I understand you correctly? That was in November. I mean, not November. I mean, the fifth. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. She was gone at that point. Okay. So she took the pouch containing seven hundred dollars from right. back in the beginning of November, November fifth. Okay. And um, has she uh, been if? You haven't heard from her at all since then? Not by the phone or social media or anything? Sorry, she would take no money and go down to the crack bottom until every penny was gone and somebody would bring out there and kick her out my door again and I'd get her back gone. And as soon as she could move, she would take whatever I had to go to the stuff. Okay. So this is a routine thing for her to go take your money, routine and whatnot. And then, so you guys got divorced, is my understanding, right? Yeah. Okay. And when was the divorce? I think uh, on the 17th. Yeah, I was 
finally about the first of November, October. Okay. October, November, around then, you said? October, November. Okay. You, you, don't, you don't remember the date of the, the divorce? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I do. What's the date on, in October? October, November, September. It was in September. Okay. What's the date in September that it was? It comes by on the 17th. Okay. What have you heard about the case that we're investigating? Have you heard anything from anybody? Anybody been telling you anything about what's going on? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's take a break for a second, okay? We're just gonna um, go, I gotta go make a phone call real quick and then we'll be right back with you, okay? Can you give me some more to lay down? Um, yes, sir, if you wanna get comfortable in here, we're not gonna stop you, you know, get comfortable. Okay. Just give us a few minutes. Let me just get my, make sure I have all the questions I need answered, okay? And we'll be right back with you. Take a little break. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna lay right here. All right, let me, let me do, actually, you know what, uh, Lieutenant, let me do this real quick. Um, would you consent to give your DNA for our case? You would? Okay. Let me, uh, let me read this to you and fill this out real quick before we end. I'm just going to fill this out. Take a little break. is a consent to collect biological evidence. Mm -hmm. It says, I, Bo P. Jeffrey, agree to permit members, officers of the Marion County Sheriff's Office to obtain biological evidence samples, e.g. blood, hair, and buccal cells. I'm just going to do a buccal swab yeah. from my person. I am giving this written permission to the Marion County Sheriff's Office freely and voluntarily without any threats or promises having been made to me, and after having been informed that I have a right to refuse to permit this seizure without a judicial order or warrant yes, of a court um, first being obtained, I further understand that these samples may be used in a court of law during the criminal procedure, prosecution, and may be used as evidence against me. So if you agree to that, if you could sign there and put your address, date, and time. I don't know my address. I can, okay, I can fill that out later for you because I know the, the actual news. Yes, uh, how are you? Yes, sir. I'll fill that in for you later. So I'm just going to do a cheek swab. It should be a painless process, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Some, some kind of medical problem, or what's going on with you? Are you just hungover, or what's the deal? Uh, uh, I'm just dying. Okay. Well, you can, uh, we can, if you're asking to go to the hospital, maybe we can facilitate that for you, okay? Okay. All right. Let's do this. Let's get this packaged up here so you can watch me do it. Okay. And this is going to go in this bag, and that's going to go into. Okay. Just give me one second, Mr. Jeffrey. I'll let the uh, Putnam officers here know uh, that you're requesting to go to the hospital, and we'll be right back with you. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna lay down here before I'm there. Okay. Let me ask you this, Mr. Jeffrey. If we go to the hospital, are you still willing to talk to us? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't mind. Man. All right. Well, I don't want you falling out on us either. So, okay. We're out on the kitchen too. Alright, so just listen in, okay? Alright, yeah. Okay, Your Honor, there's a delay in the tape or nothing. 
not a delay, but a period of time where nothing relevant happens, if I may advance. said you wanted to go to the hospital you think you need to get checked out what do you think's wrong with you i'm shutting down you're shutting down from what diabetes <laughs> all right <laughs> we'll make sure you're uh that you're taken care of so thank you sir yeah. now one officer had him off with joe's card that is what his card his card what was like a phone number on or something Okay. Uh, All right, well, hang tight. I'm starting to have his team calling in. Oh, okay. Are they coming out? The, 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 the rescue's coming out to check you out, yeah. Okay. So, just hang tight, okay? Okay. You haven't eaten in three or four days? You drink any water, anything like that? I got to use some water. Okay. Yes, you Thank you. You've been vomiting three or four days, but you've been holding down water pretty well? I told you get to my stomach. Ah, uh, okay, so you've been throwing everything up. Okay, any other symptoms? Any anything else? No? Just just throwing up. Um, weak probably because you haven't been able to eat for a while. <laughs> Might have something to do with it. We're gonna give you a little little check out here. We're running 12 weed and everything. Do you wanna go to the hospital and get checked out? You do? Okay, then we'll take you up to Putnam. Okay. I'm dying, sir, and I don't know. Why are you dying? I just didn't try. <laughs> yeah, we're all dying, if that's the case. You got any past medical history? Just diabetic. Just what? I'm diabetic. You're diabetic? Okay, so no no cardiac, never had a heart attack, no respiratory yeah, issues, no, do you smoke? Yeah. You smoke cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're just putting stickers all over you. You gotta check your heart. Yeah, I'm gonna get that out there. I'm just doing more. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you allergic to any drugs? No. You allergic to anything at all? No? Okay. Come on, man. Right over to the, the jail. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually you get dispatched or you're from. Yeah. Yeah. The only time I've ever been down here is stuff in the county. So. Mm -hmm. Well, this is weird because they dispatched it to the same address as us. So we thought it was jail too until we got there. We can do that in the truck since we're transporting. You guys want to just go ahead and get a quick four lead, get a set of vitals. 
Yes, sir. We're going to take you there, but we're still going to run all the tests and everything yeah, in the yeah, truck. Cool. Just didn't need to do a full 12 wheel on scene since we're transporting. You feel okay walking? I can't. You can't walk? Okay. I got it. Just to get up and now. Okay. Let me check your pulse, partner. How, how we call you, sir? I mean, if we bring the stretcher right out here with our assistance, we can probably get you to it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get up there. You said this has been going on for about five days. Have you just felt bad or have you been vomiting for five days? I've been throwing up. Okay. Sounds like you got a sniffle. You've been coughing? Nah, I just got a cold. Okay. No problem. We'll get you up there a little bit. You taking any medications at home? Yes. Yeah, I take metformin. Metformin just for the insulin? Yeah, a thousand milligrams a day. So you take two? Yes, sir. Okay. Just, yeah. You ever felt like this before? No. Okay, it's all new? Yeah. Okay. Checking your pulse, you may have a fever going. I'm weak. I'm probably because you haven't eaten anything in five days, man. Anybody be weak if they don't eat anything in five days. But don't worry, we'll get you. Once we get in the truck, we'll get an IV going. I'll get you it's a bag hanging. Hopefully, hydrate you a little bit before we get to the hospital. Okay. Now, once we get to the hospital, hopefully they'll be able to give you some medications, some, uh, I don't know, I guess you might need some, uh... I took one of my curls this morning already. You met Foreman? Yeah. Well, they may give you some antibiotics or something to help speed along the process or try and figure out what's going on with your stomach. Okay. So your stomach's not hurting at all? No pain at all? No, I just can't move and walk. Okay. Yeah, right bud. We're gonna pop these off here real quick. Okay. Then we get to the truck and I'll connect them back up. Okay. Let us know if you're gonna get sick again, right? Sorry. Let us know if you're gonna feel like you're getting sick again. Like you're gonna throw up. Sick now. No, we're talking about it. She's back on. Uh, we're gonna have to take it right when we get off okay. the truck anyway, so. All right. Is it a common technique to use when you're interviewing a suspect to sometimes suggest scenarios that may, in the suspect's mind, reduce the suspect's responsibility or culpability? Yes. Can you explain what the point of that is and why you do that? So, in interviewing inter interrogations, um, they train you to, if you believe that someone's not being truthful, let's say you have a fact pattern and their story's not adding up, you can lead that person in your line of questioning, considering that they're an adult and they're, the circumstances, you can lead a person through questions and present situations like self-defense because in their mind it minimizes their own criminal culpability so you could introduce ideas like, well, were you just defending yourself? Or 
Um, you could even introduce a different scenario like, well, did she, did she fall and hit her head? And these are common techniques we get just to get the person to change the story. And once that person changes their story, then we can move forward into, we know that now that their, their, their story is now malleable, they're changing their story. We can move on and, and try to get further and further down the, down the, to, to get more of the truth out of them. Please thumbs up the video and subscribe to get the latest content. If you'd like to see Bo Peet's trial condensed to an hour, you can check it out here on Caught in the Act Documentaries. And please check out our new channel, Crimes of the Times, which tells the stories of true crimes and their consequences.